Turn on and tune in to trace the sounds of Woodstock back to the people that captured the world's attention. While most documentation describes the music at Woodstock, few accounts detail what audience members were doing away from the stage. As per the contract with Max Yasger, the farmer that lent his 600-acre plot of land to the festival's organizers, the field had to be cleaned afterwards. However, a group of professional and budding archaeologists took to the old venue in search of remnants like cans, salt shakers, and fireplaces to map where the concertgoers gathered. In collaboration with the curators at the museum at Bethel Woods, students from Binghamton University's Archaeological Field School have been turning things we would call trash into pages of a story from over 50 years ago. Part of this is a real connection to a real person that was on this site having a real experience and we, we were trying to put a lot of effort into collecting and connecting those authentic experiences um, before they're gone and part of that is through our oral history initiative and part of that is through a project like this. Angie Hammond, a student at Binghamton University's Archaeological Field School, recognizes that Woodstock was unique because it was organized with the environment in mind. It brings it to life more. It's not just people at a concert in a photo waving hands. It's, it's lively. It's vivid. And I think that's really important to note, too, that these are real people here. This isn't just garbage. These, uh, they belong to someone at some point. And it's uh, cool to find their stories and learn more about them. Just as the festival's artists kick-started their careers by performing at Woodstock, Dr. Hitch hopes that this dig will do the same for his archaeology students, taking them back in time while moving their passions forward. If you are curious about Woodstock's impact or the discoveries of the archaeology team, contact Maria O'Donovan at odonovan at binghamton.edu.